So, this is my 69th video, and I see you guys out here thinking, yeah, it's gonna be a nice review. How's it going guys? It is Plastic Disaster and continuing the Heroes Month, today we are going to take a look at the Gundam XX from the anime series After War Gundam X. Give a brief summary of what the anime is about. Yes, it is another alternate universe. It takes place 15 years after the 7th war and Earth is trying to do their best living in the post-apocalyptic war while these mobile suits are handed to civilians because those mobile suits and weapons are leftovers from the war. But this Gundam right here is piloted by our favorite immature survivalist and non-team player Garod Ron even though this Gundam appeared in the second half of the show and the characters are already fully developed if I remember correctly. So taking a look at the box art, we have the Gundam XX ready to fire its twin satellite cannon and while in the background we have the Gundam X divider. I really want that kit. kit came out in 2013 so let's see it aged well after 8 years by the time of the release of this video. Taking a look at this side of the box, we see the action poses, the weapons in detail, and the description of the mobile suit. And I know it's in Japanese, but that's before they uh, decided to put English in it. Taking a look at this side of the box, we have the front and back shot of the Gundam. And uh, I was wrong, this is the description of the Gundam itself. And we also have a nice CG render of the Gundam. Inside the box, there is gonna be two bags of runners and a manual. On the cover of the manual, here is what the kit looks like when it's all painted up. Looking at this side of the manual, we saw a familiar pose and a brand new one. And a close-up detail. And we have advertisement for other After War Gundam X kits. Doing this in the awkward angle again, like my Strike Freedom Gun review, uh, looks like we're gonna be using all the parts and we're gonna start with the chest and we're gonna start with the arms and uh, right over here I miss the head more of the arms point to get together start with the legs and the waist and the twin side like cannons and right here it shows the kit finally coming together and then you're gonna build the weapons and it shows how to uh, use the satellite cannons. Looking at the back of the manual, we saw a familiar back shot and the poses. And right here just shows how the articulation, a familiar CG render, and the information. And right here will be the color guide if you're planning on painting it. Starting off with runner A is going to be the white parts. Looks like we're going to have parts for the uh, twin satellite cannon, the gun, the shield the waist, the legs, and the head. Runner B is gonna be more white parts and looks like we have parts for the uh, twin satellite cannon. Looks like there's gonna be parts for the uh, waist, I believe, and that's part for the legs. And we have another runner B. Runner C is gonna be the gray parts and it's gonna be parts for the uh, elbow band or elbow joint, excuse me, and the knee joints. Looks like we also see some head options as well. Runner D is gonna be the very, very dark blue parts and I know on camera it looks black but trust me so it looks like we have parts for the legs, the shoulders, the feet, and the torso. Runner E is gonna be the yellow parts. Looks like we have parts for the head right here and parts for the chest and looks like these flaps are gonna go on the side of the legs. Runner F1 is gonna be the clear green pieces. Looks like we have parts for the sword and parts for the chest. Runner F2 is gonna be a small runner of red parts and looks like we have parts for the shield, parts for the head, parts for the lower torso and parts for the uh, crotch. Small polycap runner. And finally, this giant sticker sheet. Okay, now this is very unsettling for me to look at and I gotta do some painting on this kit. Okay, so that about wraps up the unboxing. So not a lot of runners. It's gonna be a pretty quick build and I am not looking forward to do the stickers. Well, if you know me, I don't do stickers on my Gunplug kits. Before I start building this, fun fact, after War Gundam X is the third alternate universe Gundam series, just thought I'd let you know, and I'm gonna go build this kit right now. So here is the Gundam Double X when it's all put together, and I gotta say, the out-of-box presentation, it doesn't really look that good. Don't get me wrong, I do like the design. What I mean about the out-of-box presentation, I mean uh, there's not a lot of color separation. There are like missing color apps, of course, because I didn't use the stickers. And again, I did paint the eyes 
and the head camera to give myself a head start. So overall, my building experience, it was fun and simple. And let's take a quick turnaround of the kit. Even though it is fun and simple, it's still pretty unique in its own way. So that's why I really enjoyed this kit. If you also notice, I haven't put the uh, green neon pieces on the chest. That's because uh, I'm planning it to paint it white on it first and then put the uh, green pieces on, on without using the silver stickers and it also has a nice glowing effect. And speaking of stickers, let's talk about sticker placement. The silver stickers I already mentioned goes on the chest pieces. The eyes, of course, goes on the eyes. Sticker number two right over here goes in the back of his head, while sticker number three goes on the front of the head. Sticker number seven, or the red one, goes right up here, and I find it complete BS that this kit came out in 2013 and they didn't bother putting a small red piece to go on the head. But who knows, maybe someday Bandai would actually give a damn about After War Gundam X and make a uh, revived version of this kit. Sticker number 5 and 6 goes right here on the gray pieces. Now, I know I'm spoiling transformation a little bit, but this is for sticker placement purposes only. Anyways, sticker number 4 goes in here. These big gold stickers go onto this part of the backpack. Make sure you pay attention on the size and the side. And these red triangle stickers, two of them go on the knees, and one of them goes onto the back skirt right in here if you look closely. Yep, right there. Lastly, these yellow and black stickers go on the side of the legs. As for seam lines, there's one going all the way down on both of these side by cannons. And there's one seam line going down the leg right here and right here, but I can forgive this one because you can disguise it as a detail or a panel line. And there's also a seam line going across the gun. And speaking of the gun, I forgot about the sticker placement for this one. So this big gray one goes right over here. Sticker number 13, which is the uh, green and the gray one, goes right here. And while well, sticker number 14 wraps around this part. And one more seam line I want to point out is one going across the head this way. If you look in the back of the head, that seam line looks like a detail, so I can leave that one alone. Okay, now that you've seen the out-of-box presentation, the seam lines, sticker placement, and my thoughts of my building experience, I'm gonna work on this kit and I'll see you guys right after. And here is the kit all painted up. And doing some detailed work on it was actually a little easier than I thought. And to be honest, it's actually a little easier than working on the Strike Freedom Gundam. So when I was painting this, I'm gonna have to spoil the transformation a little bit, See these uh, gold bits on these uh, flaps right here? Originally, I uh, tried to hand paint it first, but then I realized it didn't look too good, so I ended up using spray cans instead. For accessories, you can see he already has two weapon holding hands, and next you have the beam rifle, and I already attached the trigger finger hand for the uh, right hand. To attach it, it's just a simple uh, switch the hand around. Next up, you have the shield, and to me personally, the shield's a little too small for me. I wish it was a, a little bigger. And get this, I paint the back side gray, because it was all white in the back and it didn't look too good. So I'll, again, you had to take some liberties to paint the kit. And next up, you have two beam saber effect parts, and the beam saber handles are attached to the side skirts. And for the final accessory, or should I say gimmick, I'm gonna have the Gundam Double X deploy its satellite cannons. Transformation is quite easy. First, you want to open the flaps on the leg and the arms. Make sure you get them nice and separated. And it should look like this. And moving on to the backpack, let me get the satellite cannon away. Open these flaps like so. And it's a little stuck. There you go. Make sure you bring this forward so it can have a little clearance for the satellite cannon. Rotate this, bring it forward, pull this out, bring this part of the shoulder, make sure it's all lined up so you can get it, or better yet, clip it on. And it should look like this, and you're going to do the same thing for the other side. After you're done with the other side, here is what the Gundam Double X looks like with its twin satellite cannons. 
deployed. And I know you want to display this kit like this. Okay, let me get this kit back to Noble and we'll move on to the articulation. I left the shield on because I want to show you that it can rotate just like this. All right, anyways, let's move on. The head is on a double ball joint. The abs can crunch forward this much and it can move back that much. The shoulder is on a ball joint and the arms can lift that much. And I wonder if I can lift up higher if I bring this up and eh, no, same thing. You get a bicep swivel, double bend on the elbow. The wrist is on a ball joint. The front skirts can move up that much. The side skirt can move out that much and it can also rotate. The back skirt does not move. The leg can move out that far up, which is pretty nice. It can move back that far. It can move out this far. Let me rotate the side skirt so you can go out even further. Yes, you do. The hips are in a shifting side to side movement. Double bend at the knee and the ankle guard is on a ball joint. The foot can move up that far, can move back that far. And as for pivot, pretty decent. The satellite cannon is actually on a ball joint and it's also a hinge so it can move in and out. And you already saw that this can move forward and back. But what I forgot to show you is that this can rotate. Overall, the articulation is actually pretty great. Spoiler alert, yes, this kit does age pretty well. So let's move on to the size comparisons. So here he is right next to the standard size RX-72 and just from the looks of it, it looks like he's almost or just as tall as the standard size Gundam. The Gundam X is supposed to be 17 meters tall while the RX-72 is supposed to be 18 meters tall. So I think Bandai had to take some liberties just to make the Gundam X a little taller because of the engineering they had to put in this kit. So is the uh, 1144 scale for the Gundam X false advertising? Yeah, sort of. Like I said in my Gundam F91 review, it's still a great kit. Next, here he is with the other alternate universe protagonists, the God Gundam and the Wing Zero. And I gotta say, it's really nice seeing the first three alternate universe Gundam series coming together. And they look really nice. And just for the hell of it, since I had to zoom out and move these kits to the right a little bit, here he is, right next to the Strike Freedom Gundam. And it's pretty obvious that the Strike Freedom towers all three of them. And this one goes to all of the After War Gundam X fans out there. Here he is, right next to Gal Ron's previous mobile suit, the Gundam X. Don't mind the bad weathering. And just to finish off the size comparisons, here he is right next to Godzilla and Optimus Prime. And let me just zoom out just a little bit. Here you go. Okay, so moving on to my final thoughts. Uh, overall, it is a really great kit and I recommend this to any At The War Gundam fans out there. Another thing I want to point out, if you notice I had to change the lighting a little bit. I'm not a uh, toy photographer expert, it's just that Whenever I deploy the uh, twin side like cannons, the shadow always covers the face and it gets pretty irritating. I had to do a lot of adjusting just to make it look nice. And if you're like a uh, toy photography expert or a professional, I'm sure that's like no big deal for you guys. The out of box presentation doesn't look that good. I'm talking about with no paint and no details, just a straight build and stickers because I built the Gundam X before. Obviously I used the uh, stickers that go on the side like cannons and it peels over time so I don't recommend it and I highly recommend you guys to detail paint this kit and if you're one of those modelers who put minimal effort well you got to put a little more effort once you put the work on it like I did maybe you could do better Mwah, chef's kiss and I recommend you should watch the after work Gundam X anime it deserves a lot more love despite that this is my 69th video it's not a nice anime but it's a nice anime okay okay i know you guys are confused what i mean by that is that it's a good anime but it does have its flaws it's nowhere near perfect okay so i'm about to wrap up the video right here i want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video and i want you guys to leave a comment if you have this gundam tell me your experience and if you like this sort of thing please subscribe as well if you want to see more content and leave a like as well and feel free to share if you like since heroes month is not over yet Oh boy, we still have a lot of protagonist guns to go over, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, let's take a break from protagonists with big guns, and let's do a protagonist that is...
simple.